Simple Cyber Defense Security Updates for February 24th, 2022. Welcome back to Simple Cyber Defense. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Wi-Fi security and how to keep yourself protected against many of the common threats. My name is Carl. Hi, this is Ahmad. And let's begin. So, as you know, there are basically two types of internet connections. There's the wired connection, which is basically where you plug in a computer to a wire with a wire from your router to your computer. And then there's also what's known as a wireless connection, which has a little device that sends out signals over the air, and then you pick up those signals from devices like cell phones or laptops or things like that to then connect to the internet over a wireless connection. And with that comes unique challenges and threats that come to that. So do you want to get started with the uh, the wireless connections? And sure. And so, um, so Wi-Fi, right? Wi-Fi is one of the types of wireless connections that you can have, right? There's different types of wireless connections. Uh, Bluetooth, for example, is a wireless connection. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the other, the other, you know, close range type of wireless connections on, on like NFC connections and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, Wi-Fi, the, the danger of Wi-Fi is, is twofold, right? Number one, it's very widespread. Number two, the range is almost unlimited, right? Uh, because you can you can have certain devices that can repeat that signal over long distances. Now, um, with those challenges, um, you know we have to understand kind of like what are the, the 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 threats, right? How do I protect myself from them? Uh, very simply, without getting too technical. And like what we always talk about, what we also bring to, 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 to mind is it's common sense, right? So almost all of us, when we see a, a free open wireless or Wi-Fi network, especially let's say you're in an area with spotty uh, cell network coverage, you're like, okay, do you have, do you have Wi-Fi? Yeah, here, what's the password? Oh, here's the password. Or no, it's open, there's no password. Okay, great, I'm, now I'm connected. Now what? Everything that you communicate on that network is open, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to anyone that is either on that network that you can be sitting there and sniffing all these packets that are flying, you know, through the air. Um, and even if not, right, the communication, the wireless communication is just ones and zeros that are going in radio waves all around you, right? So as you're sitting at home, you, you, and you look at your phone and go and you know check your your Wi-Fi. What what Wi-Fi networks are around are available. You'll get all your neighbors around you. You'll get their networks right, and it's very easily you can you know you can crack these the passwords for these networks right, and you can and and it, what if they're not? What if what, what if you don't crack them and you just you're able to tap that that communicate into that communication? You're able to read. You know what's going back and forth. Now, let's say it's somebody that has malicious malicious intent, and they want to capture you know um, sensitive information. You communicating with your bank. Um, that that is something that you know we have we have to protect ourselves against, right? So to to do that, we have to understand what happens uh, when we connect to the router to the wireless router, right? So your router is connected to through a hard wire to your network, to your ISP, right? Your, your internet service provider, right? For you to communicate with your router, there are certain protocols, right? For your phone to talk with that router and for that router to process all your uh, requests online. So manufacturers have uh, 
created different types of encryption, right? Encryption is a way to make that communication between your phone or your device, your laptop, any router secret. Well, there are a lot of, there is one that's called WEP, and you'll see if you go on your router, look at the back of your router, there's a little button back there that says, it says WEP. That means wireless equivalent uh, protection, right? Uh, a wired equivalent protection. So that, even though it's it's it was created for e to make it easy to set up your your wireless network, your Wi-Fi, it uses a static key to um, to con to encrypt. Well, that static key has long been cracked, right? So if you use WEP, that is that is really your fault, and, and you know, and you allow somebody to get into your network, just you just don't use it. It's it's plain and simple. And now that you know that, don't use it. There is other um, types of encryption that you'll see when you're setting up your network, um, and you know, like uh, WPA and WPA2. And and Carl, you're, you you want to talk about those types of encryptions? Yeah. So basically, WPA is the successor of the WEP. Again, it was supposed to in improve upon the connection the, the security connections that WEP failed upon and unfortunately WPA also has been cracked so then they moved on to the WPA2 see which is the current model that that uh, they're they're running so the WPA basically is a pre-shared key, and it uses um, a different method to create the encryption. So it's based upon the RC4, which is a highly good encryption that's very difficult to crack because it it uh, uses randomization along with the XOR factors. That gets a little too technical for what we're trying to deal with, but basically it's a very enhanced encryption method that improves upon the WEP method. So there's no hard pre-coded key in there. Everything's generated with the connection to it. Um, So then with the WPA2, it added some other uh, layers to the encryption called the TKIP. So with the RC4 plus the TKIP, it adds a stronger authentication and encryption to it. So it makes it even more harder or more difficult to crack it because now instead of just having one layer of the encryption, you have two layers on top of that. Um, okay, that's, yeah. that's great. Now, we talked about encryption, right? But now, let's say we solved all these issues and we know what to do. There are types of, of wireless network attacks that we can easily fall victim to, even if we, let's say, you know, we, we encrypt and, and do all that. For example, the, the example I was talking about earlier, you know, you go to a conference or you go to, you stand at, you're staying at a hotel or you go to a coffee shop and, you know, greatcoffee.com, that's the, the restaurant, the coffee shop I'm at. And I go and, I, oh, great, free Wi Fi. Connect to it, connect to Great Coffee One Wi Fi free network. Well, there's something that is called an evil twin attack, right? Mm -hmm. And what an evil twin is, is a malicious actor will come in and then they will create a, 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 an access point, a wireless access point that has the same name as a legitimate one, right? And they give it more power. Right. And so one of the things that you know, network administrators will do is if they want to limit the access to their wireless networks, there are lower 
the voltage that's going into that access point, right? So when they do that, any other access point that comes into play that has the same name but has more power, your device will automatically connect to that. Okay. So let's say you authenticate to there. There, there is there is a legitimate access point, and you you authenticate to, but there is another access point that has the same name and it's more powerful. Your device will connect to that first. Okay. And once it connects to that, and it, you know whoever sets it up will set it up as free access, right? And then they do that automatically. They sit in the middle, so it's kind of like a vector for a man in the man in the middle attack, right? Where they'll be able to see the communicate the communication that's going back and forth. Um, so that's one thing where you need to make sure that your device doesn't just automatically connect to any wireless network, right? And you make sure that you authenticate every time you connect to a wireless network. Um, and you know, it's we talked about this before. Is you know about you know uh, uh, sniffing packets is use a VPN, right? Mm -hmm. Even if you use a, a free one, which I, I don't generally like to use free products when it comes to no. anonymity and security, it's better than nothing, yeah. right? It's better than nothing. Um, so that's for, you know, protecting your, couple examples for protecting your device. Um, there's something that, you know, our listeners may not, may not be aware of, which there is something called war driving right and and war driving is a technique that is used to uh, identify and map uh, open access points right uh, the name comes from uh, uh, the fact that someone would drive around neighborhoods with a laptop and they would uh, they a laptop with a GPS device um, and they use an antenna to identify and record those uh, those networks well we don't need to do that anymore there's Many websites. There's, a, there's one that's called wiggle.net. And that one, if you go to is wiggle.net. And it has the ability to locate you. So just put your zip code there. And then it it'll show you a map of all the networks that are in your area. Okay. Um, and your network will be on there too, right? Because yeah. now what people will do is they'll, you know, they'll they'll, they'll either do like data gathering online or some will actually send drones right and mm -hmm. fly drones around to capture all those signals um so that's as you see like there the attack vectors are many and from all sides right um so that's that's kind of like you know that's to, to make you aware that with convenience yes wi-fi is convenient yes it's available almost everywhere but with convenience comes out comes at a price we want that convenience, but we want to be smart about, um, you know, using those and sharing our data. Um, and Carl, if 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 you want, uh, you want to talk to us about some ways of how uh, to protect Wi-Fi network, how, my Wi-Fi network, for example. Okay. So, like you were touching on, definitely use the strongest encryption methods on there. And right now it's currently WAP, WPA2, but WPA3 is coming out coming out to more broadly used soon. And that will add even more features than WPA2. So another thing that you can do is when you're making your, your uh, passcode, Try to make it as complicated but easy for you to remember. So using your pet's names or some birthdays or something, just like any other password that you have on your networks or for your social media or email or something, it's also a good idea to use a strong uh, network key for your network, um, what you could try doing is using the password manager to generate those really weird uh, long passwords, passphrases, and then create a QR code that you keep safe, stored safely 
somewhere in a drawer or something. So that if you need to connect to your own network, just pull out your phone and scan the QR code to get the passcode or use your password manager to copy and paste it if you have for like a laptop or a tablet or something like that. That way you're not using the weak passwords or weak phrases for your network connection. Another thing to do is to make sure that you change the default Wi-Fi and admin username and password. Right. This is a big thing because every major and minor company, everyone who makes these Wi-Fi devices has published the default username for the admin and passwords. A lot of times it's admin and admin or admin and password. And if an attacker can find that online within a quick Google search, they can easily take over your network if you haven't changed your passwords at all, especially for the admin. Um, the next thing you can try doing is what's called encrypting your Wi-Fi router admin pages. So some routers give you the option to, when you're logging in through the web portal on your computer, to use either an HTTP connection, which is not secure, or an HTTPS connection, which is secure. The reason why this is important, because if someone is sniffing your, your Wi-Fi network and you're connecting to your device using a unencrypted method to ch make changes on there, the attacker is going to be able to s take all that information that you're sending back and forth. But if it's encrypted using HTTPS, they're not going to be able to do that. So that will also reduce the risks of your username and password for your admin account to being exposed also. Uh, another thing to do is to frequently update your router's firmware. This is very important to make sure that you have the most up-to-date firmware to avoid having vulnerabilities to be exploited by the attackers. And if your router stops receiving firmware updates, go to the manufacturer's website and see if the router is still being supported. If it's not being supported, unfortunately, you'll just have to replace it because you cannot afford a vulnerability to be discovered and the vendor's like, oh, I'm sorry, we're not supporting that anymore and then they'll never patch it and then eventually the attacker will find your vulnerable device and attack it and take it over. And... Always make sure that when you're connecting through the wireless network using encrypted methods of HTTPS when you visit any website or use the VPN. Again, that will encrypt your traffic over the network so that people can't sniff your traffic and steal whatever information is being thrown over the air. Because when you're using a wireless network, there's really nothing stopping from someone just copying the data as it's being transferred from your device to the router. Because kind of think of it like you're throwing a ball up in the air. There's nothing that's going to stop anyone else from just coming up and just catching that ball in the middle of the air. The same with the wireless networks. It's just throwing all that information through the air and anyone can just grab it and look at it. Luckily, if it's encrypted, they won't understand what's going on. It won't be useful. But if it's unencrypted, then they'll see everything that's going through there without any problems. There, there is something that kind of will um, we we will miss. Even those of us who are more technical, technical, yeah. um, which is. Some of that has to do with IoT devices, right? Some some of them will go 
and we won't use them for a while and you know we'll change our wi-fi in network name and but those iot devices are still sitting there waiting right mm -hmm. trying to connect there's something that's called a beacon right and what that beacon is is that iot device whether it's a, a an alexa device or a nest device or even a light bulb right yeah we'll send that beacon every a set amount of time right searching for that wi-fi network that you no longer use right so let's say you went ahead and you listened to our podcast you chose you know a non-default ssid and you chose a nice strong password and you change all that but and you change it on all the devices that you use most of the time but there's a couple of devices sitting there that you don't use and you said okay you know i'll deal with those later time passes and as long as long and while you're waiting those devices are sending those beacons looking for those for that Wi-Fi network that used to exist, right? And it's sitting in their memory. Well, someone doing that war driving can come and they can actually catch that beacon, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're looking for Carl's Wi-Fi. Oh, but you can't find it. Well, guess what? I'll name my network, my, my Wi-Fi network, Carl's Wi-Fi. And then immediately that device will connect to it. Mm -hmm. And then there you go, that person connected to your network, connected to your device, right? And through that device, you can, you can control that device. Now, let's say that was an important device. Let's say that's a camera, for example, right? Yep. Uh, and you may not catch it, right? And now that person has access to view inside your home or to view wherever that camera is pointed to. So we have to kind of be mindful of this. I, I you know, it's just came to mind, um, but it's, that's one of the things that you know we, we have to be diligent about right it's it, like i said you know it's an it's an it's it's a full approach right it's an encompassing approach where we have to look at it from every angle yeah because basically everything that connects to a network is a vulnerability if not protected and looked after um, so it's also very important to not only keep a catalog of those IoT devices, but also all of the devices that you know what's on there. And periodically, it's a good idea to look through all the connected devices through your router to make sure that everything that's connecting to it is what you want connected. And if you see devices that are not your devices immediately kick them off the network because those could be uh, compromised devices or somebody trying to hack into your computer system so just just take that extra step to make sure that everything that's connected is what you expect to be connected because there's a lot of times I'll go through my even my own network and I'll say, okay, I this says 15 devices, but I don't really recognize that one right here. And it turned out to be, oh, I forgot because I had a new IoT device that I just brought in. So some routers will allow you to name each device so that you can easily identify it through the long list. Um, I know there's a product called Glasswire that will scan your network and then allow you to name each device that's connected to it. And it'll also tell you how much bandwidth each device is using so that if an attacker tries connecting to your network and you see that it's using, because a lot of times they'll use a larger amount of uh, bandwidth than normal because they're trying to take as much information as you can as they can and with this glass wire you can see okay this unknown device is taking up all this bandwidth so then now I know I need to block it and yeah so it's just a very handy tool to monitor your network and make sure that everything is as it should be 
both in the wired and wireless worlds. Is there anything else you want to add to it? No, no, I think this yeah. is good. Yeah, so to recap kind of what we've talked about, so with wireless networks, it's important to have a encrypted connection, which means using either HTTPS or a VPN. And it's also important to keep your routers in tip-top shape, which means any default passwords need to be changed. And make sure you're using the strongest encryption method. Right now it's WPA2, but soon it'll be WPA3. And then just be mindful of what's connected to your network so that you know, okay, I have X amount of devices. If any of them I don't recognize, you have to immediately chop it off so that it's one less threat that you have. And just make sure that all of your IoT devices are accounted for, even the ones that are not being actively used. Just make sure that if they're not actively used, just turn them off, disconnect any power to them so that they're not sending out those beacons to say, okay, I, I need this Wi-Fi, I need this Wi-Fi, and then someone comes by and says, okay, okay, here's the Wi-Fi, and then have connection to that device. Who knows? Like if it's a Raspberry Pi or some other device that holds personal data in there, they can easily go in there and just take all that information that they want. And with these recommendations, I think you'll be a step ahead of attackers. You won't be... 100% hack proof but you'll be at like 90% so that's a major plus compared to most people who don't do at least <laughs> changing the default passwords because there's so many stories out there of nanny cams that have the default passwords and people are able to connect to them and they're like oh my goodness some guy just hacked my camera like no they just used the default password and they got in there yeah so just be mindful because if you leave the door open people will walk through it and a little bit of work up front will protect you in the long run and you'll have have so so less headaches and it's just these easy simple steps add up to big improvements so with that said this will conclude this episode and next week we will have another thrilling world of cybersecurity for you so we'll see you in the next one all right thanks for listening to the simple cyber defense security updates Join us next time when we dive into more security issues and make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Plus, if you have a topic suggestion or want to support the podcast, stop by our website at simplecyberdefense.com.